How are we doing today? So this afternoon, we're going to be talking about the Craig uh, Adaptive Cutting System, uh, ACS. The Craig system, their ACS, their Adaptive Cutting System, is Craig's entry into the track saw market. So they uh, had this system designed and built for them. It is a very nice little saw and table combination that can be purchased in a number of different configurations. Uh, if you already have a guide track that you prefer using, you can work with just the saw. Uh, you can buy the saw and track. You can buy the table by itself, or you can buy the entire package that you see here. So what we're gonna try and do today is go over some of the features of the Craig ACS system and we're gonna do some cuts and talk about uh, how this guy compares to our uh, other major player in the track saw market. So first off, we have the saw itself. Uh, this saw utilizes a six and a quarter inch blade. Uh, it is a 48 tooth carbide tipped saw blade. Uh, excellent design for cross-cutting uh, panels, doing any kind of cross-cutting work. Can also be used for ripping cuts. Uh, this is a variable speed motor. You can speed it up for soft woods. You can slow it down for hard woods. Uh, you can also buy some uh, other blades for it, some more aggressive blades for doing uh, if you're doing a whole lot of repetitive ripping cuts, they do have some more aggressive blades for it. The track that it comes with is a 62 inch long track. It has non-slip pads on the underside, so you don't need to have a clamp holding this down. Just the pressure of the saw itself on top is all the pressure it needs to hold this in place. On the table, it's actually fixed at both ends. Uh, it is mounted onto a hinge. So all you do is pick up and it will set itself down uh, flush or it will match to whatever uh, dimension you have underneath it. Pick it up and it opens up. So if we take a piece of three quarter inch material here and we slide underneath, you can see that at the moment it's actually floating above the, the workpiece. Take and slide it over on that hinge and now it is resting flat on the material. So there's very little need to adjust this rail. If you start doing uh, thick cuts, you know, two inch thick or so, uh, you can raise the rail up higher in order to accommodate heavier pieces uh, or you can have it as is, and you can easily cut down to eighth inch thick material with no problem. Because the rail is actually attached to the table, uh, it's not as easy as some systems to actually take this rail off and use it separate and then come back and reattach it. There is some setup work that has to be done in order to reattach this to make sure that it's nice and square and even with the table, uh, that it's the same distance that it was originally from the rulers that are mounted into the table. So if you feel that you're gonna be using this rail off the table and on the table a lot, I would actually recommend buying a second rail. Uh, the rails are 62 inches long uh, if you're doing an eight foot sheet, obviously you're going to need two of them and you can buy connectors to connect two rails together. It's very easy to align them that way. Some other features of this table. One is the table comes drilled with dog holes, as you can see here. Uh, it comes with two different size, uh, they call them Versa stops. Most of us are going to call them a form of bench dog. The short versa stops are actually so that you can use them underneath the rail 
when you're working on a project. The tall versa stops are meant for back here in the field uh, where you need to be doing some cutting. Now, these can be used in a number of different ways. Uh, if you are cross-cutting a board, then you can set a pair of stops in there. Slide your workpiece underneath and up against the stops. Set your track down. And as part of the setup, you align your cutting edge with the actual grid on the table. So this cut is actually a 90 degree cut. Same can be done if you take and go at an angle here. You can drop into the hole back there. Oops, found the wrong one there. So let's go to this one and that one. You can set there and now I've got it set for a 45 degree cut. No measurements required. As long as the setup on the rail to the table is done correctly, it will always be a 45 degree cut. If you play with where it's sitting, if, where, if you have one that's kind of your pivot point, if you play with where the other one is ending up, you can actually do some other angles as well. Uh, but they won't tell you in the manual what those angles are. They're kind of stingy about that stuff. So to try and help eliminate most of the measuring that you need to do on this table, it does have two built-in rulers. One ruler is designed for cuts between 0 and 10 inches deep. The other ruler is designed for between 8 inches and 25 inches deep. Now what they're doing is the, saw, the table comes with these uh, brackets. These brackets mount into the track, and depending on whether, which scale you're using, which ruler you're using to actually measure, changes uh, whether you slide it in with the mounting bracket here forward or backwards. And let me show you what this does. So if you take these pieces and you slide them in forwards, what they're designed to do is have you read the shorter ruler, and it's for cuts that are essentially going to be left underneath the track itself. This actually tapers down and becomes narrower so that it is less than the uh, three-quarter inch that most of your plywood is going to be. And so if I need to do a five-inch wide cut, I can look right over the top of this thing, line it up for five inches, come back here, there we go, line it up for five inches, lock it in place, do the same thing on the other one, come right over here, line up for my five inches, lock it in place, and then take my board and slide under here, and now I know that when I make this cut, there's going to be a five inch piece from this edge to back here. The one thing that that makes you do is, you know, for me, I always end up measuring, you know, what I'm going to see as the cut piece. This table actually measures what's coming across it. So the piece that's out here is your off cut. Now, the reverse of this is, say I need to take this piece, which is already 48 inches, and I want to cut it in half. So I want to do a 48 inch wide cut, or a 24 inch wide cut. Take that, lock it in place on the 24, slide that back, spin it around, lock it in place on the 24. Come here. This one is actually a narrow enough board. I'm going to grab my other, my other sample piece because it's a little wider, a little easier to see what's going on. So we're going to take this board, slide it in here, and now when I bump up against those stops, I know that from the cutting edge I have here back, this is a 24-inch cut. <laughs> 
I'm going to take this and cut it in half. The last piece of this one is what these little notches in it are for. So if I've got, say, I'm going to do, we'll go here. We're going to do a 19 inch long cut. Oops, that won't lock in place there. Okay, we're going to do a 16 inch long cut. I'm going to lock that in, take this one, spin it around. Lock it in place, 16 inch. Take this and drop it in here. Now I can slide a really narrow piece in here and come across up against that bridge and I've got a stop for doing a 16 inch long cut here. You can also use the Versa stops to go, say, one underneath. One there, and let's do one here. And you could ride right up against those, right into that piece, and use that as a stop with just one of them instead of using the bridge. Now, because there's not a whole lot of play in this joint right here, it's actually easier to set these individually and then drop the bridge in place than it is to try and move both of them. It's very easy to bind up uh, these pieces if you try and move all three at once. This is the other piece that comes with it. This one is for doing angles. If I need to do 22 and a half, come here, there we go. Then I can unlock that. I can pivot this over right about there is 22 and a half. I can slide it up here, lock it in place, slide my workpiece underneath. And now wherever my cut line is, I will have a 22 and a half degree bevel on this board. So these pieces all come with the main table. The Versa stops come with the main table. Uh, they are all included with it. So let's do a couple of quick cuts here just to show. We're going to take that off and set it off to the side there. Take two of our pins. Let's see, I'm going to go right under. There's a locking knob on each end that you can use for raising and lowering. I'm going to use it to pick this rail up a little bit so I can get my hand underneath there and then drop it back down. Take another one there. Slide this in here. And we're going to cut this 48 inch long piece at, oh, let's cut it at 20 inches. Take our board, slide up underneath here. I've got it up against my two Versa stops. There's one stop underneath the, the rail, there's one stop here. And then I've got that to actually set my depth, take my rail, and actually put it in what they consider the closed position. And that is secure. Now, the Craig saw itself comes with a dust collection bag. Uh, it is effective. Uh, I would say it's pretty decent at capturing 60 to 70 percent of the dust. Show you what how it works on here. Um, and then we're also going to do another cut with the 
shop vac hooked up. So make sure my cord. Uh, I do have to say I like the fact that this saw comes with a really nice long cord. I mean, this is a six or seven or eight foot long cord that's on here. So if you're actually cutting across the top of a full-size sheet of plywood, you've got the cord length in order to do it. Uh, the saw is a soft start saw. So as I turn it on, you'll be able to hear it wind up. Uh, we'll let it get up to full speed, and then we will make our cut. I should, however, readjust this. There's a depth scale on the front here. I'm going to reset this for a three-quarter inch sheet of plywood. There we go. All right. There we go. So that becomes my off cut. You can see it did manage to pick up a little bit of dust powder on there from from the saw blade. Joel, can you see that easy? So and that's our cut. Now this is obviously melamine coated plywood. We're at three quarters of an inch, so there's plenty of layers in there. But look how nice and clean that is. No chip out, no tear out on either the top or bottom of the cut. I mean, that's, that's pristine. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. That's ready to go into your cabinet and perfect. So, now let's try taking a corner off of this thing. Whoop, run away. All right, so we're there, we're there. We're gonna line right up here. Let's see what happens when I try and cut the corner off of this thing. Back that up just a little bit, making sure I'm nice and up against the stops. And remember, I'm not clamping these down at all. The only thing holding this board in place is the stops. In that case, the, the length stop as well. The Versa stops and the track is the only thing holding this in place. Which means if it flies off and hits Joel, it's going the right direction. I won't have to worry about it. Thanks. <laughs> And when we, while we do this cut, we're going to go ahead and switch out and use our chop back. And here we go. So I can see where it tried to blow out, you know, a splinter. But that's a pretty good job on a 45 degree cut. There we go. Again, nice, clean, no blowout on the melamine at all. And this is managed to catch right across the corner, which is where we're getting that little serrated pattern from. Perfect. So, obviously we can cut stuff in half, we can cut angles off, but we all know one of the other ones we have to do is we have to be able to break it down into a smaller sheet. So, let's get these stops out of the way for a sec. Where'd you go? There it is. Set that back down, tighten that back up. So we know it's not going anywhere. Got a few too many accessories sitting up here at this point. Let's see. We're going to take that big sheet and we're going to rip the edge off of it. So what are we going to rip it down to? 
Let's take it. We'll cut six inches off. So that slides the F in there. There we go. That piece can go over there. And this piece can go over there. Got our 48 inch wide panel here. Slide that. Okay. Now, see, I wasn't thinking about something. That is obviously not the cut I was originally planning. Well, we're going to do a ripping cut anyways, but we're, we're going to be left with is a 16 inch wide panel. <laughs> All right, so we're going to set that down there. So I'm up against both of those stops, and we're going to basically just shave this edge off. My stops back here are set at 16 inches. Let's just see if I got that all situated right the first time around. And that's 16 inches. So we've got it all set up. It's making beautiful clean cuts. Um, there are a couple of accessories. There's one other accessory for this that I think is really kind of neat. Obviously, if you're using this for taking half-size half sheets and whatnot and breaking them down, then this all works great. What if you're actually working with a full-size 48-inch sheet? So there's two things with this for doing a full-size sheet. One is there is, and I'm going to slide this table over. There is a third ruler, if you will. This piece also comes with it. You take these guys off. So we have our, our table set up here still. Um, we're talking about doing a working with a full size sheet of plywood. So if you've got an actual eight foot long sheet of plywood, how do you start breaking it down? Because most likely, you know, your first cut's going to be something more than just five or six inches. The third ruler that comes with this is this long extension bar. Now, this long extension bar is actually got a scale on it as well. So when you are doing a eight foot sheet and you're trying to cut it in half, right at the tip of this is 48 inches. So you would slide this inside here and there is a mark right on here, 48 inches. If you line 48 and 48 and then set this lock underneath, this becomes your scale for your entire cut. If your first cut is to take that eight footer and knock it down to 30 inches for cabinet sides, then you would take and slide the 30 inch mark <coughs> to match your 48 inch extension mark over here. And again, just lock that little handle. So this is what you would use in order to do your wide cuts. But if you do cut 
a four by eight and you're cutting it in half, that means you've got an entire other half of a sheet of plywood as your offcut hanging out over here. The great thing is that Craig has a couple of brackets that sit in this track that you can actually build a quick outfeed table that's easy to put on, easy to remove, just by locking a couple of brackets into this track. Uh, it's a great, quick little system. Uh, also works really well if you have either their work table or their track horse, their, their uh, I forgot the word for one. <laughs> Anyways, if you have their work table or their track horse, um, you can use the brackets here and you can use the brackets that come with the, either of those two tables to build a really fast outfeed table uh, on this side. Um, now, the other brand that we carry here in the store that a lot of people are familiar with is the Festool. And Festool for a long time has had a very good uh, track saw system. We get asked a lot, which one's the better one? Is it the Craig or is it the Festool? Now, as a personal opinion, I think the Festool is a better saw. Um, now, but it's not better for everyone. The Festool system versus the Craig is significantly more expensive. By the time you get the saw and the table, you're almost double the price of what's sitting here. But the Craig, the Festool is exceptionally good, is exceptionally well set up for doing all kinds of different cross cuts, whether they're a really long board that you're top, chopping up into one inch blocks or you're having to do a whole lot of mitered cuts for uh, trim and molding and stuff. It doesn't really matter. The, the cross cut setup on it is superb. This one though is really better suited for big sheets. If you're taking big sheets and breaking them down, this one really is better set up. It's got the, the way the surface area is designed is better set up for it. This one I think is also a little easier to move around. When you fold this one up, it actually ends up resting on a pair of wheels. So it's very easy to actually just roll this onto a job site, drop the legs down, and then roll off with it again when you're done. Um, the Craig saw itself is a little bit heavier than the Festool, but it comes with a higher tooth blade. This comes with a 48 tooth blade. The Craig generally comes with a 36 tooth blade. So there's pros and cons to each one. I think in the long run, I do think the Festool is a little nicer one, but this one is great for all kinds of mobile projects, uh, particularly anything involving sheet goods. You're gonna have a, I think you're just gonna have an easier time dealing with large sheets on this machine. Uh, do we have any questions that have come in or anything? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, well then I hope you've enjoyed our demonstration on this and we look forward to seeing you next weekend. Have a great day.